Hey guys, John Lee Dumas here, founder and host of EO Fire, and you're listening to Bravepreneur Parents Academy with Balaji O. Welcome to Bravepreneur Parents Academy, where the world's most inspiring entrepreneurs reveal their most defining childhood moments and share their legacy for raising brave little heroes who will grow up to change the world. And now, he still reads comic books under the blanket at bedtime. Please welcome your host, best-selling author, award-winning speaker, and self-confessed geek dad, Balaji O. You know, like the hotel in Vegas? Yeah, no, that's really his name. Balaji all right hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the bravepreneur parents academy today we got an exciting one for you guys yes she's the dj he's the rapper she's the serial <laughs> systems expert he's the serial business entrepreneur she's the chai lover he's the call of duty fanatic we're talking about tom and ariana sylvester the founders of serial startups they got the podcast they got the academy they do real estate they do wine and liquor stores <laughs> they are doing everything right now where do they sleep and in their free time they raise the two most adorable little children. Personally, I think somehow Ariana has them in the back doing some kind of work. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to get to the nitty gritty of this. So, folks, get ready. Strap on your seatbelts. If you want to learn the real deal about how to mastermind a business, if you want to know how to juggle personal relationships while managing a busy household, if you want multiple streams of income and the fast track to being your own boss, get ready. Get your chai tea, <laughs> sit back, turn off Call of Duty. We're about to talk to Tom and Ariana Sylvester. Sylvester's, welcome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This is a real treat. You guys are doing it up big. You're doing what a lot of us out there would like to do. Not only are you running a successful business, you are running multiple successful businesses, disparate businesses, I might add. Some of these don't really seem to relate to nope, each other. not even a little bit. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> but you're also doing it together. Together. Yeah, How... and we haven't killed each other yet. I know. Yeah. How can you stand yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's start at the beginning, though. Um, Tom, I, I know that you mentioned that you started out being a bit more entrepreneurially minded. Can you start us out at the beginning? Where did the very first venture start? And at what point were you able to convince Ariana to come on in on this crazy adventure with you? Yeah, so the first business started probably 15 years before I even met Ariana. Yep. So I was about five. <laughs> and... uh <laughs> I realized that you could buy bulk candy at the store, and then I could sell that to everyone that came to our house. Mm. So I had a little candy shop in my room, and that worked awesome for a couple of weeks. And then I realized that uh, bugs and ants and all that stuff would get in. <laughs> so that shut down the first business a couple of weeks in. Yep. Yeah, he thought he was a genius. <laughs> but uh, add some years on to that, and um, actually several businesses failed, or I couldn't get Ariana on board with them. And uh, finally, it started with real estate. And basically, the only reason that worked out for us was because I went and spent $7,500 on a credit card for some real estate training. And I didn't tell Ariana about it until afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, hang, hang, hang on. You, I can't let you breeze past that, Tom. You, let me make sure I got this straight. You spent – okay, this is after several failed businesses, which, by the way, I've been there um, as an entrepreneur myself. So you went through several failed businesses. Then you found this real estate one. You're like, yes, this is the one. This one's going to pay off. And you invested without letting Ariana know. How did that work out, Ariana? Yeah, he was in trouble for that one. <laughs> he was in trouble out. for that one. Because he also forgets to mention that we had just gotten married. Oh, no, we were getting married. So we were paying for a wedding. Oh. We had just that bought- hadn't happened yet. And we had just bought a house. And then he went out and did that. And I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess you're lucky that I'm DIYing this wedding. And it's, you know, pretty cheap compared to what people are spending on weddings these days. But it oh was done. Gosh. I mean, we couldn't take it back. So we just yes. kind of had to move forward and talk about how that would never, ever happen again. 
Mm-hmm. So that, well, well, good for y'all that y'all were able to work through that. So, so how did that work out, Tom? And then what happened next? Good. So to take a step back before that, um, basically I kept trying to, when we got out of college, I realized that we didn't want to work for the next 45 years and then retire at the end. Um, yeah. We wanted a different life than that. So basically, I kept trying to get Ariana to start different businesses, and she shut them all down. <laughs> so finally, spending this money was kind of the, the end of it for me. It's like, all right, well, I got to make this work. Let me spend this money. And then after I told her, I'm like, well, man, now I really have to make it work. Mm-hmm. Um, so from there, we actually kind of sat down and did what we should have done a couple of years before and mm-hmm. really talked about, like, what do we want our lives to be like? And then how do we get there? And basically, you know, Ariana being the great wife that she is, Uh, we realized that, hey, that money's already spent. So instead of dwelling on it, we can say, okay, it's gone. But what do we do from here to actually make that thing work? Um, So we started buying real estate. We did that over a couple of years, built that up, and then um, eventually got into our next business, which was actually uh, buying a wine and liquor store. Yeah, well, that came around because of the real estate. I mean, we had the opportunity to buy a commercial building that was empty, I uh, had one unit, a commercial unit that was rented, and then the other side was empty. So he's like, oh, well, what can we put in there? He's like, well, what if we put our own wine and liquor store in there? Um, his dad owns one in the next town over. So we already kind of had the, the history behind it, the knowledge that we could get from them. And uh, it's a nice small town. And we're like, oh, all right, let's see what we got to do to make this work. And went through, he did the entire planning process for applying for the license and, you know, planning all the improvements how we were going to set it up, and then basically all of the processes that we would have to learn and put in place to be able to run the business. Mm. Fascinating, fascinating. And that so was, let me, was... Just put, let me just point out, that yes. was the year we had our daughter. Okay. So we have pictures of a pack and play in the liquor store <laughs> <laughs> while we were oh, setting it up. And then I had to actually work the first week there because our full-time employee didn't start until one week in. So I worked every day that first week after our grand opening, and Tom would come and take the night shift and relieve me. So I would take our daughter home, and he would work until close and then come home after he had worked his day job. So it was wow. it was a crazy, crazy idea, and people thought we were insane for doing it. But now it's working, and we love it, and on to the next. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. So from real estate to, and I imagine this was residential real estate. Yeah, most until we bought the commercial building, it was starting until okay. Started until yeah, started as residential, and now we're getting more into commercial. Got it. Got it. Excellent. And so you ended up with the wine and liquor store. Mm-hmm. At a certain point, you guys now transitioned online. How did that happen? Yes. Yeah, so as we started the first business and then started the second business and then got married and had kids, one of the top questions that everyone would ask us is, how do you guys manage it all? You know, you guys are you know married. You're not parents to two young kids. You have these multiple businesses. How do you really run it all? And, you know, we started off talking one on one with people and then we were just getting so many questions that it got to the point where it's like we can't help or answer all these questions one on one. So let's shift it online and let's start sharing this information. You know, we have a podcast, we have a blog, and, you know, we have some courses available. But it's basically let's get this out to more and more people because we've met so many parents that are in the same boat that we've been in and trying to get to, like, where we're at now. Well, and that started originally as a blog, which was something else that Tom had to convince me to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, there's a pattern going on here every time we start I see that. Um, But we started off as a blog and, you know, I never thought anyone would want to hear anything I had to say. But once I started writing, obviously, we figured out that that was different and people did want to hear, you know, both sides of the story. Um, And that was our Entrepreneurweds blog that we had. And then after, you know, months of doing that and we kind of really didn't have a direction and we kind of sat down and we're like, okay, well, this is not what we intended for it to be. We need to figure out how to change it and how to make it work. So that's where we kind of went through the whole rebrand. We changed what we wanted the business to be and came up with the serial startups concept and actually offering the product as well. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. Now, now, Tom, I know that you went to school for computer science (laughs) and business management. Ariana's already laughing. Yep. (laughs) And and Ariana, you went to school for zoology, zoology, zoology. And, And somehow you've ended up being the linchpin, I think, 
my opinion, the, the, the genius behind the operation in terms of taking Tom's entrepreneurial creativity and energy and actually scaling it. There's still just two of you, <laughs> and yes. yet you're running at least three dis- disparate businesses right now without losing your hair. Well, Ariana, <laughs> without losing your hair. <laughs> yeah, Tom, are you one of us? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ariana, talk to me a little bit about your background and how you were able to sort of discover the superpower that you apparently had uh, <laughs> for being able to make organization uh, out of some haphazard you know, creativity. Um, I guess it kind of started with the zoology degree. That was something that I loved and thought that I was going to go and do. And then reality hit. And that's not really a career that you can kind of just jump up and do. I mean, to go in and actually be a zoologist, you have to get more schooling if you're going to do the research side of it, or if you're going to be, you know, if you want to work at a zoo, you can't necessarily pick, you have to go where the jobs are. So that was something where I graduated and was like, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? Um, I don't really want to have to move across the country to find a job. So I ended up working locally at an animal shelter, which was kind of along the lines of my zoology degree. And then I got injured working because it's a very physical job um, and ended up in an office as an administrative assistant, which is not really what my degree was for. Um, but you know, you make it work, you adjust as necessary. And I like to think that a lot of my so-called superpower came from the fact that I worked multiple, a variety of multiple jobs and I just learned a lot of different skills. Um, and I'm able to use all of those skills in all the businesses that we have in different ways, um, different things I've learned, different experiences. And I guess I'm just sort of a chameleon. I just kind of adjust and adapt as necessary. I learn what I need to, Tom will tell me, okay, I, I, you got to learn about this because uh, I think you'll be really good at it. And I say, okay. <laughs> yeah, and adding on to that, I mean, a key point and and how we manage it all, whether it's the business stuff or whether it's being the parents, it's you know segmenting roles and basically saying what are what are we each good at, and then how do we make sure we take responsibility for that? Obviously, we'll help each other with the other stuff, but really, you know, taking advantage of our strengths. That's such an interesting and valuable point, and I like how you related it to parenting as well. Uh, I found, for example, probably the same to same as the rest of the married folks that are listening. When I first got married, well, even before I got married, when I first started dating my soon-to-be wife, we very quickly realized that she was good at something. She was in her zone in some areas. I was in my zone and stre- at strength in other areas. But accepting those roles, may- that came maybe a little bit later. Mm. You know, There were certain things I was good at that maybe I didn't want to be the point person for. <laughs> so yep. so I- I'm kind of wondering, as you guys figure out who does what in the business? There's going to be some really cool stuff, Tom, that you like to do. Coming up with new products or new business concepts, maybe talking to the public, you know, paint, painting your vision. But there might be some nitty gritty stuff that you don't feel like doing, and Ariana doesn't feel like doing either. Who picks that up? Um, most of the time, we we try to. It's a toss up. It depends on time management a lot. Um, you know, which one of us has the time to add that task on and then really just, okay, well, who's better at it? Who can get it done as it needs to be? And then maybe someday we outsource that little task we don't like to do. Yeah. So Ariana's being nice. The reality is I come <laughs> up with it and whatever I don't want to do, I just outsource to her. <laughs> okay. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, but with that, I mean, so, so that's basically it. Like we, we do a lot of planning. We talk a lot and that's the key, you know, same thing, you know, being a business owner or being in a relationship, the, the key comes down to communication. So a lot of what we do is we'll start out with that idea. Um, a lot of times I'll take it to begin with and then I'll outsource it to her and then we continue outsourcing that to someone else, especially if it's something that we don't want to do or it's not worth our time. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. I, I, I got to go back. I've gotten ahead of myself here, folks. It, you both have a really good business chemistry and obviously a good personal chemistry as well. I want to know where that came from. How did you guys meet? What's the origin <laughs> story? And I have to warn you, Tom, this, the, the version of the story often differs between husband and wife. So, so we're going to go with you first, Tom, but you're treading on thin ice here, buddy. Make sure you tell the right version of events. How did this happen? All right. So I you know, was getting out of high school, and I was looking at you know, what's my next step. 
Um, didn't really know what it was, but I ended up, you know, everyone's saying, you know, go to college, go to college. And I, you know, had some skills with computers. So I applied to one college. I got accepted <laughs> to it and showed up the first week because I went to play soccer. And the one tip that my cousin gave me before I went was to stay single. So what did I do? Really? I saw the very first girl at college <laughs> and I snatched her up. He means very first as in we lived on the same hall in the same dorm and I was three doors down from his door. Yeah, she was literally the only girl there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Wow. And so, Ariana, what was that moment like for you? Tell me about the slow motion. Tell me about him, you know, the wind blowing in, through his hair. Um, What hair? I, 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 did, <laughs> have, did, have I hair. did have hair I at that point. I joke, this but he did actually year. have hair freshman year. <laughs> there we go. Um, So it did happen that way. I mean, we were both there for college. I didn't have a roommate because my roommate didn't play a fall sport, and he did. So um, I was literally alone the first week of school and I was sitting in my dorm room after practice and was like, OK, I'm really bored. There's nobody to talk to. Let me just walk around the hall because, you know, some of the dorms had random people interspersed based on what they were there for. So I go to walk down the hall and come to an open doorway and that was their door. They were sitting there watching TV and I had a box of Hostess donuts, chocolate donuts. <laughs> Hey, you guys want a donut? And he's like, oh, no, no, we got pizza. Yeah, so I actually shut her down the first time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He was like, oh, no, we got pizza. Thanks. But I sat I sat down in their doorway and we talked and he eventually turned around and then he wanted a donut. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we, you know, we saw each other at practices and, and at the cafeteria because we were all eating at the same times. And um, I increasingly saw him passing my door. And I come to find out that he was drinking an excess amount of water because the water fountain was just past my door. <laughs> so he was making a reason to come back and fill up his I water told bottle. You, we were playing soccer and I was dehydrated. Uh huh. Smart, sure. Smart man. So, yeah, that's Excellent. how it began. And it was, I mean, it was more of a just a very comfortable automatic friendship that very quickly turned into a relationship and they used to call us the married couple the soccer teams because we literally started dating that first week and we knew right away that we it was the long haul we were going to be together we were going to get married out of college and um, our family thought that was hilarious and never going to happen and then four years later we moved out and to apartment together after graduation and he proposed that christmas he couldn't even wait wow wow Okay, so so Tom, you're very much an action taker, <laughs> and, and actually, Ariana, you are too because you initiated with the Hostess Donuts. Thing. I did, and, and that sort of translated into your entrepreneurial life. How did you guys move from being employees to full time entrepreneurs? Yep. So a lot of that came back from goal setting. So I, I mentioned earlier when I got out of school, the goal that I set was by 35, you know, we're going to be retired. And what that meant for me was we just weren't going to have to work for someone else. You know, it didn't mean that we weren't going to work at all, but we were going to have options and really define how we want our lives to be. Um, so one of the first steps there was actually getting one of us out of a job, which mm -hmm. was Ariana. So okay. our goal was, well, we've got to replace her income with something. So we ended up, you know, continuing to buy real estate and then we started the liquor store. And then when we had our daughter three years later, we were actually able to get her to stay home and work in the businesses, and she was able to actually replace her income. Wow. And then, That's fantastic. Yep, and then from there, it was just continuing with that to basically say, okay, well, now that you're home, how do we have you continue to help build these businesses and take maybe more of a larger role so that we can eventually get you know me home as well? Mm -hmm. Right, right. I want to talk a little bit about the phase before the success. I think a lot of times we entrepreneurs or students of entrepreneurship, we listen to all these inspiring stories, these great accomplishments, seven-figure, eight-figure entrepreneurs or six-figure entrepreneurs, but we don't hear enough about the things they did that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Tom, you alluded to the fact that you tried a handful of things that didn't really take off before your big um, real estate move. Could you guys talk about that phase a little bit? And I'd also be interested to hear, Ariana, your standpoint, your perspective as the spouse. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like seeing him struggle? So, Tom, could you talk first about th those first ventures that didn't work? Yeah, so at first it was, 
you know, I set that goal and I was like, I have no idea how we're actually going to make this happen. So I looked around and it was like, well, everyone invests in the stock market. That seems like a good idea. So I went, bought a bunch of books, read as much as I could, uh, and then lost money in the stock market. And what I realized was we didn't have a lot of money to start with. Mm -hmm. So any money that I had to put in there, even if I did really well, it was going to take a lot more money and a lot more time to actually grow that into, you know, a decent revenue that could replace our income. So then we got into real estate and basically at first I say we, it was me doing 100% of the things because her approval was basically, okay, yeah, you can go and do that, but that's just going to be right. like your hobby. Right. And then uh, I started another IT consulting business um, with a friend and we, you know, I ended up selling that two years later. But the big thing there was figuring out what didn't work with that business and then we could apply that to all the things that we did after that point, which helped us succeed. Mm. Mm. But the one thing I'll say along the way is we fail probably every, probably every day, <laughs> if not every week. Um, some are small and some are large. But one of the big things with failure, and to your point, uh, people not hearing that, is what we try to do today is to make all those failures very small so that we can identify them quickly and then adjust from them. Early on, what we did, especially because we didn't talk a lot, was we didn't talk about those little failures or we kind of avoided them. And then it turned into big failures, which were a lot more painful. Yep. And and from this, I guess, the spousal point of view, um, the hardest part of being an entrepreneur's spouse is watching them go through those failures. And I mean, in Tom's case, he was still he, he's still working full time. And then we're trying to do this entrepreneurial stuff on the side. And, you know, he's just stressed and he's tired and he's trying yeah. to make this work. And yeah. from the spouse's point of view, um, it's just it's tough because you want to be there to support them. But you also have to be that voice of reason telling them, you know, hey, this isn't working. Like we have yeah. to either make do something to make it work or we have to get rid of this one, scrap this idea and start with something yeah. else. Because, you know, the entrepreneurs, a lot of times they have that that heart and that passion and they want to get there and get it working. And sometimes you have to be the person to squash the dreams a little bit and, you know, yeah. make sure that they're on the right track and say, hey, this idea not going to work. Maybe you go with the next one and, you know, we'll talk it out and we'll figure out how we can get to where we need to be. Mm, 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 mm. Tom, Tom, tell me a little bit more about that. I, I feel like you have a perspective on that <laughs> and I can, I can sort of share because my wife, uh, she has taken turns being an entrepreneur next to me as well as being the supportive spouse who still has a corporate job. Right now, she happens to have a corporate job and she loves what she does, but she's been an entrepreneur by my side as well. And she's had to wear different hats. Just as you mentioned, Ariana, sometimes she's the cheerleader and she's cheering me on when I'm stressed out, I'm getting four hours of sleep a night, and she's just there to, you know, how can I help? Other times, she's that voice of reason <laughs> yep. that crosses my dreams and says, <laughs> maybe there's a different way you should consider. And that's not always easy to hear, especially coming from the person I love most in the world. So, so Tom, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what it's like for Ariana playing that role, both as cheerleader and then sometimes as the voice of reason. Yeah, so it's it's definitely frustrating, um, probably more so when we started. But it was it was like every time I'd come up with a new idea, you know, she would instantly shut it down. And in a lot of cases, that was for a very good reason. I probably would have guessed in a lot of trouble. <laughs> maybe maybe I didn't go about shutting him down the, the nicest way. But uh, one of the things that we realized after you know doing this for years was what finally made it click for us was sitting down and kind of talking about okay, if we look out you know ten years or twenty years in the future, what do we want our lives to look like? And what was interesting was we did that separate and then we pulled it together and we realized that we had a lot of commonalities and then there were some things that were different that we didn't realize about each other. And once we had that like vision laid out, then we could start working backwards. So what we do is we lay out goals for 10 years and then we work backwards and do five years, three, two, one, and then, you know, the current year. And what that allows us to do is say, well, these are the major milestones or goals that we want to achieve. And now once we're aligned on what we want to achieve, then we can kind of talk about how do we achieve it. And if something isn't going to get us to our goals, it's much easier for both of us to realize that. Whereas if something is going to get us to our goals, it's also easier to see that as well. Interesting. Very, very useful perspective. Now, I understand that along the way, you guys were able to pay off a pretty impressive amount of debt. 
Debt is something that a lot of families struggle with, but entrepreneurs in particular, uh, you know, as exemplified by the $7,500 investment that you made, Tom, (laughs) entrepreneurs a lot of times have, you know, they have to make these investments in their business and they're taking family savings, they're taking their salary and spending it on the business. Could you talk a little bit about the time when you guys were in that mountain of debt, what did it feel like? Did, did you guys feel like you'd ever come out from under that mountain? And how were you able to finally get it all paid off? It felt like we were never going to, it was like a never ending cycle over and over and over. And I think a lot of that was our own, um, I guess, ignorance coming out of college and not having a, a very good plan. You know, we got, we came out of college we bought that first real estate property. We got married. We bought the house. We did all that stuff in a very short amount of time, and we didn't really plan financially for any of it. So right off the bat, you know, we put ourselves in a huge amount of debt. And I know that there's other people out there that do the same thing. Um, so then it was those years afterwards. Okay, we're still trying to buy the properties for the real estate. And then we're opening the liquor store, but all in that time period, we're trying to also drop our debt down and get out of debt because otherwise your income is never really your income. So trying to figure out, I guess, the gray areas there, it was tough for a while. And then we finally were like, okay, listen, these businesses at some point have to kind of hold their own because we need to make our own personal finances make sense before we can keep putting money into these business ideas. Yeah. And one of the things is, you know, it starts out with your personal finance before you even get into a business, but you have money coming in and money going out. And the key when you want to start getting out of debt is to really understand where, how much money is coming in, where is it coming from? And then how much is going out? Where is it going? And are you plus or minus every month? And if you're a minus, meaning you're spending more money than you're making, the first thing you got to do is turn that around so that you start bringing in more money than you spend. Once you do that, you know, we, we basically started paying off one credit card and then taking that money, putting it onto the next credit card. And then we got to a certain point where we said, okay, we're paying off this debt, but now we can really make it pay down faster by starting a business and bringing in more income and really increasing that. Mm-hmm. And we're big on making sacrifices if we need to, to, you know, to keep that income that's coming in instead of spending it on other things. We don't eat out a lot. We got rid of cable. Um, we don't, I don't go shopping. Um, well, the kids are difficult because obviously they're growing, but we don't go shopping for ourselves very often. We don't buy each other Christmas presents or birthday presents. Um, you know, we just really are very serious about making sure that our money is going somewhere it needs to go. And then at some point when we get to the point we want to be, then we will kind of add those things back in here and there. (laughs) Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is you do have to make some sacrifices, especially if you make some poor decisions early on in order to get yourself to a good point. And then later on, you can start adding those sacrifices back in. No birthday presents, nope. really, Ariana. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm very low maintenance. I'm not – I don't mind. Um, if there's something I need – well, that's the other thing. If there's something we really need, you know, then we make that – the point of, okay, this is something I need. So we're going to go ahead and spend the money on it. Um, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't need a lot. My parents buy me my, you know, my new sneakers. <laughs> my mom's a phys ed teacher. So she's big on sneakers. I get my one oh, new pair of sneakers it. a year. Well, you know, and one I of the things it. too is, you know, we have such a focus on things like in our society. And one of the big things that we decided early on was that we have a lot of things and we don't need more things, but what we can get more of is experiences. So whenever those days come around or, you know, really just once a week, we always try to do something, you know, either together as parents or, you know, with our kids. Yep, family because time. Those are time. going to be the things that we remember later on. We're not going to remember, you know, this new gadget or toy that we got for a birthday. How old are y'all? Like 70? <laughs> Too much wisdom. I, Let's dial it we back actually a little are bit. both 31. Got- you you need some vices here. You need some vices. <laughs> oh, we have vices. We just don't spend money on our vices. Uh, <laughs> cheap vices. I yeah, love cheap vices. Okay. I was gonna say, yeah, we actually built an entire home theater in our basement. Mm-hmm. So oh, so we have nice. our vices, but those vices came after we started, you know, getting our personal finances in order. And then, like a big thing we do now is we let the business, like we we take our money, we start a business. Then once the business is making money, we use that to buy our vices, because once you do that that business is still going to keep bringing money in month after month. Whereas if you're just taking your income and buying the vices and you never put a business in the middle there, 
then yeah. once you stop working a job, then you can't buy your vices anymore. It also helps when you own a wine and liquor store and one of your vices is wine. Because <laughs> Tom loves wine and, you know, whiskey and scotch and pretty much anything. Um, so it's very helpful because, you know, I just when I go to the store my once or twice a month to check in on things, I just bring back a bottle for Tom and he's set. He's good to go. That's hilarious. Yep, that's my, that's that. my business research. There you go. Very good. But dedicated man right there. What's a challenge, though, with working with your spouse. There's a lot of stuff that's working well for both of you, Tom and Ariana, but there are some inherent challenges with working with your spouse. Could you talk a little bit about some of those? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest ones is, you know, in a relationship, we talked earlier, communication's key, and you have to communicate even more when you're working with your spouse because a lot of people like, you know, you can communicate with your spouse and then if you go work a job, you're kind of away from them. But if you're working with your spouse, you know, it's harder to separate your personal life from the business life. And you really have to make sure that you're on the same page with what's going on because you, you're not really getting away from each other. And you've got to make sure that here's our personal life. But when we get into business mode, we're going to kind of step, you know, we're going to close that out and get into business. And then we're going to close out the business stuff and get back into personal life. So one of the big tips that we've done for that, we we have a separate space and a separate office um, for our business stuff, but we also do a lot of focus on, you know, blocking out time for specific things so that we can change gears and get back into, you know, if we're in business mode now, we make sure that's what we focus on. And when mm. we're doing, you know, family mode, then we get back into that. Mm. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I think communication is is definitely the biggest one. Just, I mean, because you, 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 everyone's got those little stressors, those little the things that annoy them, and in your relationship. Well, then when you're working with someone, that takes it to the next level, and you kind of almost have to shut that out. You have to, you know, leave those things on the table and walk away from them, and make sure that you're getting the work done that needs to get done, and the the arguments that you're having, make sure that they make sense because you don't want to be fighting over the little stupid stuff. Well, and and with that. All those things, the the little stupid things, what you want to do is you want to actually get those to light so that you work through them. Because yes. let those little things dwell, those little things become big things over time where you could have handled yeah. them earlier. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is really, really good stuff. I did mention earlier that I have worked with my wife <laughs> in a number of businesses over the years. And so we've been through a lot of these sort of challenges that we're talking about right now. My wife is an amazing, amazing woman. Love her incredibly. But there are things that she does from time to time. There are habits that she has where I feel like, well, I would have done that differently. And goodness, we, we, we're all human beings. We're all sometimes a little egocentric. We tend to feel, at least I do sometimes, <laughs> that my way is the right way. And if you want to do it your way, you really have to convince me that your way is better than my way. You know, at least subconsciously, that's what tends to happen. And so when she's doing something in her own little way, I'm over there. I might be over there stewing like, why won't she just do it the way I do it? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, sometimes I need to step back away from myself and say, you know, really do just relax. First of all, if she wasn't doing that, you'd have to do it on top of the 10 yep. other things you're already doing. That's the first thing. Second thing, your point of view is not the only valid point of view. Maybe ask her why she's doing it that way. She might have a good reason for it. And so that communication really helped, has helped my wife and I over the years, but we've had to sort of learn <laughs> through it. We made a lot of mistakes early on in our marriage in terms of not communicating about things. For example, I tended to be very thin-skinned about things. Uh, she'd say something. She wouldn't even know she, she'd offended me, but then I'd just stew on it for like a week <laughs> and, and, and not say anything. And eventually she pointed out that habit and – now I'm all better, and I only do that once a month instead of every day. <laughs> yeah, well, well, and that's the key thing, you know. Her calling that out makes you guys talk about it, and then you can work through yes. it. Um, one yes. of the other things that we've really identified is what we call like working agreements. So there's going to be certain things we've realized that we've got to talk about, like in the businesses or even you know as parents. And sometimes I won't be in the right mood, or she won't be in the right mood, and it won't be a good conversation. So what we figured out is, you know, when these things come up. How do we make sure that each other is aware of it? And then how do we figure out, do we talk about it now or do we maybe schedule some time later when we're both in the right mind to actually have a good conversation? Yep. Interesting. 
Tom's a, well, he, yep, yeah, that's, that's one early on that we were dealing with. Um, you know, he's very internal with a lot of his turmoil and he doesn't want to talk about it. And over the years, we've just kind of worked through that. And, you know, if he needs his space, we talk to, we talk about that. Okay. I need my space. All right. We'll, we'll review this when we're both, you know, better able to talk through things practically, uh, you know, instead yeah. of getting emotional and, and making right. it way bigger than it needs to be. Right. And a lot of times you need, you need a little bit of space if you're, you're working on the business or if it's on the weekend and we've got the kids and there's just a lot of stressors adding up. It's, you know, taking that space saying, okay, we recognize that we need to talk about something, but we both need a little bit of space to think about what we want to say and make sure that it's relevant. And then we, we meet back up later and we talk through things and make sure that, you know, we never go to bed angry. Yep, that's a big one. Mm. Mm. Very useful. Very, very useful. I'm glad you guys are sharing this stuff. Okay. Hey, I've had you guys for a little bit. We're going to have to let you go because you've got not a business, but about three or four <laughs> run. But a podcast we, we got to record. <laughs> there you go. Before we let you go record that podcast, we are going to put you through the lightning round. All right. You guys ready to go through the lightning yes. round? Absolutely. Okay. All right. I can't promise you'll come out unscathed, but there you have it. (laughs) All right. First question for both you. Let's go with Ariana first on this one. Your favorite superhero. You're going to laugh at my answer. I didn't have one because I was not allowed to watch those types of shows. No. I'm serious. For real? For reals. My parents were strict. Oh, my goodness. Like your poor childhood. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to need to get her therapy. All right, Tom. Help her out. Favorite superhero. So for me, it was Batman. Um, I always thought it was amazing that the guy had so much money, yet he was still going out and helping people. Mm, wow. Wow. Uh, we hear Batman a lot, but I haven't heard that angle before. Mm-hmm. That is Bruce Wayne, man. <laughs> well, at least you know who okay. Batman is. I'm caught is. up to my superheroes, by the way. I know, right? I know. Okay. All right. You get, you get partial credit on that, Ariana. All right. Favorite cartoon? Care Bears. Oh, was good Care Bears. I was obsessed with the Care Bears. I had a Care Bear. <laughs> I had a Care Bear blankie. I think I had Sunshine Bear. <laughs> Adorable. And for you, Tom, favorite cartoon? Uh, I had a lot, but probably Ninja Turtles. Yep. Ninja Turtles. It comes for a circle. That's what our daughter's obsessed with right now. Really? Yep. Yeah, we actually wow. went back and showed her. So there's like a newer Ninja Turtles. Yeah. And we went back and showed her the old school one from like the 80s, and she loved it. Yep. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, my eight-year-old was obsessed. When he was seven, that was his show. Mm-hmm. But it, it got replaced by uh, Power Rangers. Oh, yeah. Good. I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> favorite family tradition growing up. Tom, what was your favorite favorite family tradition as a kid? So at Christmas time, we would always get in the car and drive around and look at uh, Christmas lights. So we'd see all the different houses and displays. And, you know, you always have that like Christmassy feeling that time of year. And like that was the one thing we always did where it was like, you know, this is it. This is the epitome of life. Love that. Love that. How about for you, Ariana? Mine is Thanksgiving Day. My family is um, a little bit different. We don't do the whole sit down dinner thing. Um, Ours is everyone comes to my parents' house. They live out in a small town. Um, They got a big house, lots of space, open spaces for everyone. We just kind of hang out. We put the food out and everyone just eats all day. We're there at like 1 p.m. and we eat like four or five different times. You got all those courses. We got <laughs> snacks out the whole time. We would play games. You know, we get the board games out and the card games. They got the football game uh-huh. on. So it was just a really fun day where the whole family was there and we all got to see each other and just have a great time. That's great. I love that. I love that. Do you guys live close to your parents right now? We do. Clo- and not like super close, like five minutes down the road. My parents are about a half an hour away. And Tom's family, um, his mom's about 10 minutes and his dad and the rest of his family is about 45 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not horrible. But, you know, it's when you're trying to drive all those places in one day, it is very horrible. <laughs> when you can spread it out a little bit over a couple of days, then it's not so bad. That's pretty. That's pretty cool, though. That's pretty cool, Tom. What was one embarrassing moment for you as a child that you might recall? One of those cringeworthy moments that maybe still sticks with you. <laughs> so when I was in kindergarten, I was big into Ghostbusters, and we had uh, a flood in. Like it, this was weird. We had our kindergarten room, and then we actually had a bathroom attached to it. So we had a flood in that kindergarten room. And I actually, I had, for some reason, I had my Ghostbuster uniform on. I can't believe my parents let me wear that to school. 
But uh, I was convinced that there was like a ghost in the toilet, and that's why the bathroom was flooding. Oh so I went gosh. in there with my little like ghost catcher thing and like threw it on the floor. Oh. And uh, oh. the teacher had to pull me out, and I was all wet, and I didn't catch the ghost. I don't think you ever told me that. Everyone was like, hilarious. "What is he doing?" <laughs> And then my parents oh had, my had a conversation about uh, Ghostbusters and what's real and what's not. And oh, <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, classic, classic. Okay, I hope this doesn't change things for you, Ariana. He's, he's still a good guy. No, he's always been a geek at heart, so I shouldn't be surprised by that story. <laughs> How about you, uh, for you, Ariana? My most one embarrassing maximum? moment was probably when we had school pictures, and I had just my mom had just gotten her hair cut, and she got this cute little like pixie short haircut and I wanted to emulate her. So I want, I asked them if I could get my hair cut the same way, except I have a super full head of crazy curly hair. And what happens when you cut curly hair short, it gets even curlier and shorter. So this little haircut turned into really short haircut that people thought I was a boy. I didn't dress like a girl. I didn't wear dresses and stuff. I was kind of a tomboy. So when I went to my school pictures, they called me a little boy, and I was so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, and I wow. didn't even say anything because I was such a shy kid. Uh, yep. Terrible. Yep. Terrible. I feel your pain. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's brighten it up a little bit. Goodness, that was that was a little bit sad. Can you guys tell me what one of your most proud moments as parents has been thus far. You want to go first? Me. I was going to say, it's tough to narrow it down to one, but one of the biggest things that I guess I didn't realize before becoming a parent is just how fast uh, your kids learn and how much they pick up and model from you. So there was one day where I was working in the office and I turn around and my daughter, she was probably like two at the time, she's got this like ink cartridge up to her ear and she's walking around talking uh, like she's talking on the phone. So I asked her what she was doing, and she said, you know, she was talking to her grandma. And I was just kind of blown away that, you know, she had seen us kind of talking on phones, and then she had just picked something up and started carrying on this conversation, you know, like someone was on the other end. And, uh, I mean, since then, there, there's always just those little moments where it's like, oh, my gosh, these these kids are picking up so much, and they're, they're literally like a sponge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it's not just one. It's, it's like Tom said, all the little moments where – you know, you've got your day to day stuff and you got the big things that happen, but just taking a step back and seeing those little moments where you know they're listening to you and you know that they're learning. Um, and just, I mean, our three and a half year old can write her own name, she can spell her name, and she can also type it on a computer. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> I didn't have a computer until I was like 12. Yeah, and she just <laughs> she blows us away sometimes with just her capacity for learning, and she takes such joy in it. But then on the flip side, so you know, a lot of people are worried about electronics. She'll, on the flip side, go outside and play with worms. Oh, my God, she loves to be outside. We were outside yesterday, and she didn't want to come in, but it was getting dark. <laughs> Mommy, can we go back outside? No, it's dark out. Oh, okay. Uh, and then oh, she just plays hilarious. outside with the, you know, her imagination is just insane, with the okay, we're we're playing Ninja Turtles, and here we're at the Ninja Turtles house, and she's just—it's just amazing to me the the capacity of for kids to have all of that in that tiny mm. little brain. Mm, mm. So precocious and so precious as well. <laughs> These are beautiful, beautiful images you've painted for us. All right, as we close, guys, I'm going to ask the last question and the most important of our very fun conversation here, Tom. Can you share with us one thing that you absolutely adore about your business partner? Uh, I think the fact that she puts up with me. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. If, if I had to uh, create a job opening and post it, I'd have to pay a lot of money <laughs> to get someone to go through all the stuff that she does. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And Ariana, what do you what do you love about this this teddy bear of a guy next to you? For me, he is just the most motivated person that I have ever met. Um, we would not be able to do everything that we do without him backing us and pushing us and just being he's just he's the rock, man. He's just there for everything. He wants our family to have everything we need. He wants our future to have everything. And he's just got this brain that just doesn't shut off. <laughs> 
I love it and I hate it at the same time. <laughs> I, was I was gonna say. That. <laughs> that just means more work for you. Yep. Brilliant. Well, folks, we've been talking to Tom and Ariana Sylvester of Serial Startups. You can hear them on the Serial Startups podcast. They're about to record an episode yep. right now. <laughs> so we're going to let them go ahead and do that. But if you want to get inspired about working with your spouse, if you want to figure out how to mastermind a business, juggle the personal relationships and a busy household, all on the fast track to being your own boss, you couldn't have a better set of Sherpas and guides and Tom and Ariana. She's the DJ. He's the rapper. You can find them on SerialStartups.co. That's SerialStartups.co. Tom, Ariana, thank you. Thank you. It's been great. This was a lot of fun. Until next time, folks, up, up, and away. Thanks for supporting my dad's show. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to iTunes. He said hot chocolate is for closers. If you don't subscribe, I don't get hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate. Fear not. Although this chapter of Bravepreneur Parents Academy has come to its conclusion, we have many more adventures for you and your brave little heroes. Head over to BraveQuest.me for access to the BraveQuest Journal, an interactive activity playbook that rewards your little ones with points for accomplishing tasks that build character and unleash your child's inner superhero all before bedtime. We look forward to having you join us for more adventures next time on Bravepreneur Parents Academy.